Good morning, everyone. We meet again. Welcome back to my Naked, Frying and Afraid episode. And today I come to you wearing the stylings of Meg. Thank you so much for my new apron. I love it. So I have a special recipe for you today. So have you ever had bananas? I'm sure most of us have, but have you ever had plantain? Now, we make something called tostones, and the tostones are made with the green plantain. So let me show you one of these. They look like this. They come in all sorts of different sizes. They also even come in different varieties. This is just the regular green plantain, and it's important for the recipe that we use the green type. The yellow ones are also delicious, but once you cook them, they get softer and sweeter. So the green one will remain crunchy. So I'm not only gonna show you today how to make the tostones, I'm also gonna show you how you can use them to make them with a bunch of other dishes. Three of those I'm gonna show you today. The first one I wanna show you is a white wine shrimp scampi that is delicious. Then I'm gonna also show you how to make a beautiful guac. And you can just use these to dip in them. The last thing I'm gonna show you is something called a picadillo. If you've never had those before, it's essentially a not sloppy, sloppy joe. So stay tuned, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna turn this little bad boy into a great meal. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and prep the plantain. Now, there's a couple of tips and tricks to make this work in the air fryer. Normally, when you fry this up, they are very, 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 very crunchy and very dry. That's what grease does. It removes a lot of moisture. But we have to be smart about this because the air fryer works a little differently. So there's two main things we need to do. We need to make sure that we cut them thinner than usual. So they're not gonna be the big, gigantic plantains that you normally uh, make when you make those donuts because you make a big, gigantic piece that when you smash it down, it grows really big. So these are gonna always turn out to be about a medium sized plantain. That It's great for dipping and great for stacking, but it's definitely gonna be a little bit smaller. So that's the first tip, and tip that I'm gonna give you. Now the second tip is that we need to make sure that we brine them after you cook them. The classical way is before you cook them, you brine them and you kind of leave them in water for a long time so they can get a lot of salt and a lot of flavor in them. This is gonna work so fast, you literally are gonna just put them in the air fryer, you're gonna brine them, and you're gonna put them right back. Check this out. Now it's time to deal with this plantain. Now, these are a little bit different than your regular run-of-the-mill banana because these are way harder. Now, the way that you wanna cut these is you wanna start off by cutting off the ends. Now, I'm gonna be wearing a glove, this is why. Every time I mess with these, it turns my fingers a little bit darker. It turns them almost black. So it looks like I have dirt underneath my nails. So I know that happens to me. So if it happens to you, it washes right off, but you can just use a glove instead. So right here where it tapers off, you wanna go ahead and cut off that end on both sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and discard that. And it's not something that stains you just by touching it, is that you're gonna see what we're about to do. So you take the plantain, and as you can see, look how thick that rind is. It's way different than a banana. And by the way, you never eat these raw. These are not edible when they are raw. So we have to always cook them. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a little score down the middle, and you wanna score it so much so that you can sort of get it to where the peel and the flesh meets, because you're gonna sort of go underneath that peel, and you wanna get it started. So you can see this is a lot harder than a banana and really, really thick. So after you get that started like that, and I like to do it on both sides, and I know if you've done this in the past, you might be really good at this. I am not the best at removing the skin on these, but this trick, you get it started, and then you take your fingers and you run them sort of down without taking some of the banana with me and see what I did was I scored it too deep. So this is what might happen to you and I wanna keep it here. I'm glad that it happened so you can see what could happen. So make sure that you don't cut that deep and then you kind of push it back. See that? You push it back off the banana. Yep. And as you can see, since I'm pushing my nails into that, especially if you have long fingernails, you wanna either keep using the knife and slowly you take it under and slowly you lift just so that you can get your finger underneath it, or just keep using the knife. Take your time, because these take a second to peel, but the result, I am telling you, it is absolutely delicious. So I'm just going my way around, just removing these. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that the banana doesn't have any of these little lingering little green pieces. We wanna make sure that all of that is removed. Perfect. So this is the next trick. In order to make this successfully in the air fryer, you have to cut them much thinner than what you normally are used to. So you wanna cut them about an inch in. So start making inch cuts all the way down the banana. 
So now that you have everything cut about an inch in thickness, there you go. So we're gonna grab a bowl and we're gonna go ahead and put all the bananas or the plantains in there. Give them a little drizzle of olive oil. Just a little bit will do. If you wanna get really technical, I maybe have put in there uh, half a tablespoon. I think one tablespoon will be a lot. Now this is two bananas and what you really want them to feel like is that they are completely coated in oil. So make sure you toss them really well. If they feel a little bit too dry, just add a little bit more, but you're gonna do this again. So don't get too heavy handed on the oil in the beginning. So lightly salt these, just put a little bit of a sprinkle of salt on top, give them one final little toss. We're gonna go ahead and toss all the bananas in here and spread them around. It's okay if they touch, try not to though. You can make this in bigger batches, you can make them in smaller batches. I like to just do one layer at a time, only because I want to make sure that I get a really good crisp on these right from the get-go. So for six minutes, we're gonna cook these at 400 degrees. We're gonna get our brine ready to go. This is super easy. All you're gonna put is in a bowl, you're gonna put in some water. And what I've done here is I put about a third of a cup of water and I'm gonna take a half of a teaspoon of salt and I'm gonna put it right in there. So after I've done that, I'm gonna take two garlic cloves and I'm gonna go ahead and mince that really well. And I was actually kind of pushing on the garlic with the side of my knife just to get some of the oils out. And I'm gonna add that to the water. Now I have salt, garlic. Now finally, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a teaspoon of onion powder. So with everything in there, I'm gonna give it a quick stir. So here's where the magic happens. I'm gonna take a tostone, which is already cooked and it looks like this. They're a little warm, so you wanna make sure that they cool down just a little bit so you don't burn your fingers. So let's see if they're completely cooked. So we're gonna take our tostonera and we're gonna open it up and it goes right in there, pushing it down. It's done. Now, not everyone's gonna have this. This is probably like $3 at your local grocery store. It just makes it so easy not to over squish them and it's just, bam, done. But let's say you don't have this, tell you what, you're gonna go ahead and grab another tostone. You're gonna get yourself any glass that has a bottom, flat bottom to it, or you can even get a plate and you're gonna just kind of push down and you eyeball it and there they are. Perfect. So I'm gonna do this version a couple times. Press, there they are. Press, there they are. So how much does it yield? This is two whole plantains, so it's quite a lot. I would say one plantain for two people to just sort of use it as a side dish is plenty. I made two plantains, so this is probably a good side dish for a family. All right, so let's get ourselves organized. We're gonna go ahead and push them over to one side just so that I have a little bit more room. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, just for the sake of filming, I'm gonna take one of these little tostones and I'm gonna dip them right into this little brine that we made earlier and set it to the side. And I'm gonna go one by one, tossing them and just setting it to the side. You're gonna give them a quick little spritz with oil on both sides and dump them right into the air fryer. So if you have a mister, this is probably the best time to use it, just because this does need a little bit of oil to be coating them at every step. But let me tell you, way different than deep frying these twice. One last little spray. Done. All right, so now we're gonna put them back in the air fryer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place them all over the bottom of the air fryer, just like we did before. And I'm gonna try not to let them touch. There's definitely gonna be some touching, okay? Just don't just dump them in there. So do your best to spread it all around. This was pretty simple. And this base recipe you can use to make everything you can think of and just use these like chips. You can use them to dip into, you can use them to load. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna use these to either eat by myself or I'm gonna use them for other recipes. Put it back in the same 400 degrees for six minutes. So that's it. Six minutes, dip them, six minutes, eat them. Here they are. You guys, they look amazing. So you can eat them just like they are. I mean, hmm. It's such a different flavor than just eating a banana. They're perfectly salted because I added a little tiny sprinkle of salt when we first put them in the air fryer and there was plenty of salt in the brine. So that gave it the perfect amount of it. You can taste everything we put in it. You can taste a little bit of the onion, a little bit of the garlic, nothing is overpowering and they're just delicious. They still have a meaty inside like you would normally do when you fry them, but there's that crunch in there. 
Think about how much oil you actually use here. You put a little bit of a drizzle of an oil before you put them in the air fryer the first time, and then you spray them down the second time. So that compared to deep frying something twice, huge difference. So if you like these, try them. If you never had these before, give them a shot. They are delicious. All right, so these are perfect as they are. You can have them as a snack, you can have them as a side in your meal, but if you pair them up like an appetizer, oh my goodness. So the first thing I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna get me a beautiful shrimp scampi. And folks have been trying me to do some recipes that don't just revolve around the air fryer because they don't have one yet. So this section you need an air fryer for, but the next section, you can just follow me at home for this one. Let's go to the stove. 